from Dispatches from the Frat House. I wanted to show you a little bit of how I use OmniFocus on my phone um, for several different things actually. Um, it's great for project planning. I also use it for repetitive tasks, especially repetitive tasks that kind of have more than one step to them, if that makes sense. Um, so here you see the layout um, in the iPhone app. This is kind of like your home screen. Um, I'm not going to open the forecast portion just because that's right up at the top, kind of in a pinkish red. I'm not going to open that just because um, Mike's calendar shows up in there and there are names of, um, you know, there's hockey players in there and clinic patients in there and whatnot. So I'm going to leave that closed, but everything else we should be able to look at. So like I said, I use this for both projects and for repetitive tasks. Um, so up at the top you have your your forecast so you have anything that's passed and you'll see in red there's a 12 there I left some of my tasks from Saturday and Sunday unchecked so I could show them to you um, and then you have today today is Monday and then you have Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and then what you have coming up for future tasks the next section down is your inbox and that is where I will dump stuff really quickly um, and you can just by pushing it in the bottom right corner, the little basket with the plus sign. If you push that, it immediately pulls you up to everything you would need to fill in a task. You can either fill in just, you know, sample task and leave it at that. Um, you can tag it so you can tell it. Um, I do have a lot of location-based tags on here. So if it's something I know I need to get at the grocery store or Target or the music store or Office Max or the postal shop, it will my phone will notify me if I go near one of those places. So if I have time, I can stop and do that um, task and get it done with. So these are all the tags I kind of have available right now. You can create as many as you want. And then in the project section, um, at my highest level of kind of organization and the highest level that you can actually do in OmniFocus is a folder. So as you see where it says templates and then PPM article template or templates issue details template. Um, there's a templates folder that I have and then inside of that are different projects. Um, as you can see here, article topics, admin, possible content. So these are all kind of the projects that I have I even keep you know book releases and book series in order um, so that if it's a long series of books I can keep track of where I left off when I take a break from reading those long series when I want to jump back into it again um, daily and weekly tasks in the home and bills are one of the places where I use repetitive tasks so I just change the due date for the bills when I get the new notification that the upcoming bill is due um, and household tasks I are pretty much just, you know, on Mondays I do certain things, on Tuesdays I do certain things, so it just kind of keeps me accountable there. Um, you can flag a task if you want because you can filter things to show you only the flagged items, so the super, super important stuff will get flagged. You can set your due date and your due time, and then you can also adjust your due dates when you tap the due button. So if something comes up, it notifies you, you know you're not going to get it done, say, for another week. You can tap the plus one week in the bottom left corner. It'll automatically set your task to be due a week from today at the same time. And then you are good to go. And then you can even set notifications and repeats. So that is how you add a task very quickly. Now once you file a task into a project it comes out of your inbox and goes into the projects because the inbox only holds items that are not housed within a certain project. Okay so here you can see these are all the projects that I currently have in OmniFocus and the ones that have a little folder off to the right hand side those are that's like the you start with a folder and then a project and then tasks and then subtasks kind of becoming more specific as you go so for very quick things honestly i'll just hit the little plus sign in the bottom right corner i'll dump them into the inbox sometimes i worry about whether it gets put into a project sometimes i don't it just kind of depends on what kind of thing it is and how much of a hurry i'm in when i do add it to the inbox i try to go um, through my inbox every evening usually it's a very quick thing because a lot of times i've written things down on paper rather than put them in the inbox here in omnifocus so i've already delegated them in my planner on paper so it's usually not a both kind of thing if something if i write down something on my daily page my daily pages serve as my inbox in my planner. If I've written something on my daily page, I don't bother putting it into OmniFocus at all. If when I process it, like in my planner and go, okay, uh, this is something I want to make sure I get done by next Tuesday, let's say, 
then I might go ahead and throw it in a specific project in here if there's a project that pertains to it and put a reminder on it uh, for when it's due. So it will show up in my, um, my daily forecast on here just so I get that digital reminder for it. You can see a lot of these have gray dots. Those are tasks that are either on hold um, because they're not anything that needs to be on my radar right now or um, they're ones that repeat. So like the templates, when I set up magazine articles for paper planning magazine, um, I obviously reuse those templates for every issue, right? There's one project in there that's about, let's see, like issue details. So this is all the stuff that I need to do to set up an issue. Um, if it's an article, these are the things I need to do with the article. And as you can see, this is a good example of contexts. If you know anything about GTD, um, if you've read David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, you know about contexts. Now I've found as time has gone on since I read Getting Things Done, I don't find contexts to be as pertinent to me personally as they used to be because of how much um, my cell phone has kind of become integrated into my daily existence. So your context would be the physical location at which you can do a task. So I can do, you know, article editing and featured images and you know, all of this. I really can do all of this on my phone, but it is way easier to do editing and whatnot on the laptop. So I take all of these computer, and honestly, this featured image one, this should honestly be, we're gonna fix that actually. Um, we're going to make that phone instead because I do, there we go, now it's tagged phone. Because I do all the featured images usually through Canva on my phone. So that's basically where you're gonna be. So if you find yourself, Think about, you know, at the time when you didn't have a cell phone that could do everything and you knew you were going to have a good solid hour in front of your computer and you knew you had a lot to do but you were kind of unsure where to start, you can pull up, didn't mean to bump that, you can pull up your contacts on here and just have it show you, show me everything that I have tagged with computer and that'll give me all the tasks that I have tagged with the word computer that regardless of what project they're in, so I can see what all I can get done while I'm in front of the computer. Okay, slight interruption there, sorry guys. So anyway, that is contexts. Um, you can also see on this kind of main home screen, you have, do have the flagged, I don't have any flagged tasks right now. I save that for tasks that are super, super important. And generally, those are already in my paper planner anyway. I do not use the flagging option very often. Um, nearby is that location-based reminder. So if I have, um, for a little while there, let's say for example, there was one certain type of coffee that Mike was drinking and the only place locally I could find it was at our local Target. So I had that reminder set up in there. So anytime we were at Ulta getting haircuts next door to Target, my phone would go off. OmniFocus would just say Mike's coffee and I would think, oh yeah, do we have any of that? And if I knew we were running low or you know, we were out or he'd be coming home from a road trip so I should make sure I have some, I would run next door and grab it because it was physically close to that location, which saves me a lot of time backtracking. <laughs> Can't stand the backtracking. Um, tags are, again, those contexts. So here are all the tags that I use. Um, I do add tags, delete tags as I find them to be um, you know, appropriate or being used basically. I try to go through my tags usually once a month. I do an OmniFocus cleanup and that's where I go through all of the kind of higher level stuff like tags, contacts. Um, speaking of going through and cleaning things out, this review section, this once a week will have a week from the time you created a project. You will see a number there and I already did my review yesterday uh, because yesterday was Sunday, but this review will have a number next to it and it just flips you through um, a screen screen for each project so that you can kind of have an overview of all the projects you have going on in here um, so that you can kind of maybe catch up, check some things off that you forgot to check off that you did get done. Um, but it runs across all your projects, which is great. So you kind of get them in front of you. So that I do once a week. I do try to do a full clean out roughly once a month where I do kind of look through all my projects again. I look through my tags so that I can adjust any contacts. I double check my inbox, um, make sure that, you know, I don't have a pile of things uh, because I have been guilty of letting things pile up in my inbox um, and just kind of clean things out on kind of a, a higher level than, than the project review level. 
And then down here at the bottom, you have other perspectives. So you've got things that have recently been completed, anything that you have changed, which has saved me more than once when I have changed something in a project and then needed to change it back or make further adjustments. Say I added a task to a project and uh, I need to go back and change the date. It's a very quick way to get to the thing you changed in that project. And then this week is everything coming up that is due within the next week. That is a custom perspective that I set up on the laptop. I don't do that very often. And honestly, I don't use that perspective a whole lot because of this forecast section up at the top. Now, one of the biggest things that I get a lot of mileage out of OmniFocus on is one repetitive, I suppose you could call it, project. And that would be stuff I actually do in my planner. As you can see, I have a project folder called Planner. I have weekly setup and monthly setup in here. Now, I did not mark off my weekly setup stuff yesterday because I wanted to show it to you without flipping to the following week because Mike has some stuff on the calendar the following week that I didn't want to show up by accident. So this was the best way to just double, double check that I avoided that. So this is kind of the weekly process for setting up my paper planner. I sync my planner and OmniFocus, so anything I have sitting in my OmniFocus inbox gets put somewhere in the paper planner. It might get put on the ongoing to-do list. That's kind of my, my later on tasks. They're not tasks that are current and necessary right this like week. Um, any project updates I need to do, maybe I need to add some steps to a project in OmniFocus because I scribbled them on the project page in my planner, that kind of thing. So I sync my planner in OmniFocus. Any bills that are due during the week that I want to get paid that week, I add to my weekly calendar in my paper planner. And I also go through, and if I've gotten any bill notifications for upcoming bills, I adjust the due dates of those bills in OmniFocus. Um, I make sure I have Mike's schedule, um, which I can see in here in the forecast portion. <clears throat> Let me show you that. I'm sorry, I have a tickle. Up here in this forecast portion, you can see there. That is what it generally looks like. Tasks and your calendar will show up. Your calendar will show up in a list format. So I check that and just make sure I have his whole schedule written in so that I don't miss anything that maybe he might need me to do or anything I need to stay ahead of because he's got something coming up. Um, any hockey travel he's got coming up, things like that. Um, any appointments that I might have or that the boys might have. Um, then any tasks that I did not complete the prior week. So a lot of times that is in my paper planner. They may not all be in OmniFocus. And that just reminds me to go back in my planner and check. Do I need to forward any incomplete tasks? Um, now this is a little bit different this month because it's One Book July, but I usually choose a video that I want to work on that may not necessarily mean recording it that week. It kind of depends on how that week is going um, because as you guys, obviously you got to know by now, like we've got a big family and that tends to come first. So usually I don't get a video, a video out every week, but I do start, you know, looking into things, jotting down thoughts, thinking about it, taking notes, getting links together, things like that. So I usually choose a video. Um, Anchor, that is for the Anchor app um, for my podcast, which I do not touch nearly enough, but that is this is kind of like my ideal. My goal is to get a video up every week, um, an Anchor episode and a podcast up every week, and then just something I'm focusing on for writing. It might just be journaling. It might be something I read that sparked an interest, anything like that. So this is kind of my my run through of my weekly setup in my planner. And the reason I keep it in OmniFocus is it keeps me from having to flip back and forth in my planner while I'm doing it. I can just have my weekly, my weekly spread open and I can go through this stuff on here and I'm not having to flip pages in my planner back and forth. And secondly, then this is huge. It's pretty rare that I get to do my weekly setup without any interruptions just because I tend to do it on Sunday. Usually everybody is home. It's usually Sunday, you know, afternoon, evening. Um, I usually start it right before I start making supper. I end up finishing it after supper is done. So it, it gets interruptions, right? This is not a process that happens without interruptions generally. Sometimes it does. So having it in here where I can check off every week what I've gotten done so far, and then I can walk away and come back and I can jump right back in without having to stop and think, okay, where exactly did I leave off? Did I check my schedule yet? Oh yeah, I did. did did I check the appointments yet? I can just look and pick up right where I left off. Now I do the same thing for my monthly setup. It looks almost exactly the same as my weekly. Um, and actually we can take off, this tracker can come off because I have, I'm sorry, it's getting loud in the background guys. I haven't gotten, um, I usually don't use a tracker 
um, on paper so I can take that off of there but the monthly setup the only thing that's different is everything obviously applies to the whole month so I will pick four or five videos that I would like to kind of focus on through the course of that month a couple of topics instead of one topic for anchor and the podcast a good handful of topics for writing instead of just one so this is where that process of taking something that's big and filtering it down into smaller more manageable tasks this is where that process kind of happens for me this is also set as a repeating setup so I check these off and then they come due again at the end of the next month Um, the same in the weekly setup these are all due at the same day at the same time on Sunday and once I check them off they are automatically due again the following Sunday at the same time I mean you have several options in OmniFocus for repetitive tasks Um, The home stuff in here is also the same. So that is pretty much it, you guys. That is how I use OmniFocus. I'll be honest with you, it is the very simple kind of bare bones um, method for using OmniFocus. I don't need it to be a super hardy industrial, you know, project management system. I don't have, you know, big, huge things going on to that extent that I, you know, have to do that. Um, But I like that it covers several different purposes for me. I can kind of brainstorm and brain dump in it. I can have um, projects already set up. I have projects set up in the templates folders. So all I have to do is just set one of those as an active project and change the title and I'm ready to go. So when I'm, say, setting up um, an article or an issue for the magazine, I don't have to try to remember all these steps or recopy all these steps in my planner or anything like that, it's all here. I just keep the template in the templates folder. I duplicate it, rename it, and off we go. I love that time-saving aspect of it. It's a great place, the inbox is a great place to just kind of snag those very quick random thoughts that you have when you can't deal with them right that moment. At least they've been captured. Um, I, I really get a lot of use out of this, but in a very simple manner.